I was looking at the big news out of last week, uh, Lance Armstrong, uh, shocking to many people. What's your take on it? Are there lessons to be learned for, for sponsors? There's a lot of lessons to be learned. I mean, the reality as, as spectators and lovers of sport is that we're very disappointed when these kinds of allegations seem to come to light. Uh, in the instance of Lance Armstrong, we see a number of instances where you know, the likes of Nike and the ones that you mention um, have to part ways with an athlete. They do so very quickly and it causes lots of issues with an athlete's image. But Lance Armstrong is a very unique individual because of him being a cancer survivor. A lot of people believe many of the things that he stood for and the millions of dollars that he raised for his own charity and for cancer research. So it's, it's very troubling in many ways because we want to believe that they're not guilty. And you know the reality is that cycling and track and field have had challenges in the past with, with athletes and doping allegations going back as far as Ben Johnson, certainly for 1988 in the Seoul Olympics. Absolutely. Yeah. You mentioned, of course, that that immediate pullout, the quick pullout when it comes to these kind of, uh, I guess, um, well, scandals. Uh, is, do you think that's the right way to deal with it? Is it something where you should distance yourself immediately from the athlete? Depends on the situation, by all means, and depends on what the allegations are. It also depends on what kind of brand you are. I, I guess looking at looking at Nike, for example, with Tiger Woods, uh, obviously with his uh, personal scandal three mm -hmm. years back, uh, Nike chose to continue sponsoring him versus obviously what they've done in this case with, with Lance Armstrong. I'm looking at those examples. Yeah, it's, it's quite interesting because it depends on the part of the world. In some instances with these athletes, they separate what they perform, how they perform on field with their personal life off the field. And certainly in some markets around the world, but not all of them, there's a separation of what kind of athlete they are on the field or in their sport of competition and what they and how they live their personal lives. A tiger is an example in some parts of the world where they made that distinction. So Nike stuck with Tiger. Some of the sponsors did not stick with Tiger, but that goes back to brand DNA and and uh, you know the, the the likes of Red Bull and Nike are looked at as being quite aggressive, certainly high moral standard to be sure, but willing to take a chance and willing to kind of live on the edge whereas fast moving consumer good companies like the Gillettes and so on elected to leave early. But that's also the options that companies will design into the agreements with the athletes. So if there is a moral ethics break, then they will have an opportunity on their terms to dissociate, disassociate themselves from the athlete. So do you find that sales really are affected by situations like this? Will you typically see a dip in sale if we've seen such a big change in public opinion? And, and then likewise, if say uh, an athlete suddenly wins a gold medal at the Olympics, mm. does that mean sales really go up? I think it's important to look at the upside and the downside of sports sponsorship. I mean, it's, there's many reasons why companies do sponsor athletes, but at the same time, there's lots of uplift in terms of good things that can happen when, when sponsors associate themselves with athletes, but on the negative side, there's things that can go downhill. Does it affect sales? It certainly can. Positively and negatively, depending on the news, if it's good or bad, depends on how the athlete is positioned in the marketplace, you know, what sorts of things they believe in. A John Daly, for example, in the golf instance, is perceived much different than somebody who's a Tiger Woods, who's perceived as a family man and so on. They, they're, they're held to, to different standards, at least in that instance. So. So how do brands protect themselves against this kind of thing? Earlier you mentioned some of them says clauses written into contracts. Is it very easy to drop these athletes if suddenly they do fall out of favour? Well, it depends on the extent of what they've done, truthfully, on that spectrum of how serious is it. But they write those clauses in there for a very good reason, so that if they feel their brand is being damaged by an association with an athlete, in this instance a negative association, that they can exit the scene. But it has to be a significant breach. So. That that's how they protect themselves, that's for sure, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I guess when you look at someone who has fallen out of favor, I mean, is there any hope for them going forward? Is it something where, I mean, Tiger Woods pulled through, is this something where Lance could ever stage a comeback, maybe particularly as a cancer survivor, or is it just, the, is, is, it, is it done for him? Well, it really depends on how they handle that situation, right? I mean, we can look back at an athlete like Kobe Bryant, who had some issues a few years ago, and there are others in the past, Andy Pettit if, in, in the baseball space, um, was also, uh, you know, uh, issues with, uh, with doping and, and, and so on. If they admit it very quickly and it's perceived as being an honest admission by the athlete, there's an opportunity to recover. The Lance Armstrong situation is somewhat different insofar as he hasn't admitted to doing anything wrong. He stepped down, he elected not to fight the cause any further, but depends on the position that they take. So if they're bold, 
if they believe that the best course of action is to admit it right away, that can be a very positive step to, to, to get it over with and then move on from there. But every athlete is different, the situation is different, the egos are different, the personal circumstances are different. So it's, it's difficult to, to really give you a sweeping um, <laughs> sort of strategy for each athlete. Sure. So very quickly, just before we go, obviously Rory McIlroy uh, strongly tipped uh, to become a big new Nike ambassador. Do you think that will return Nike to the big global clean image that they have been known for? Obviously he's a champion golfer and he's a, a talent around the world, but will he give them that clean, uh, nice boy image again? That would be the bet, wouldn't it? The bet would be that, that, that here's a, uh, a, an incredible young athlete from Northern Ireland. You know, Tiger Woods is 36 coming, 37. So, you know, in terms of the next generation of golfers and Rory having won two major championships, quite impressive and a good, and a good track record ahead. The matter of whether or not he will sign with Nike is the big issue, right? I mean, most of his agreements, as I understand them, um, come to uh, their, their, their term at the end of the year. So he's free to have those discussions. Um, so it's not just uh, the, Ju the Jumeirah instance or the Titleist instance in his case. All of them need to end at the same time. Nike, when they structure their agreements for their higher profile athletes, requires that the athletes are clean. So they cannot wear any other logos, similar with Adidas and many of the athletes that they endorse. So, so they have to buy out all that inventory. I think it would be an interesting move for Nike to do something like that with Rory. But I think it's also fair to say that from a local perspective, if you look at Jumeirah and the incredible yeah. deal, if you will, that they've, and I do not know the commercials around that, but it's a very, they made a bet early on, right? And that's really what we're talking about. Companies make bets on the upside or the downside of an athlete. They made a bet, albeit a calculated one, they're smart people and it's a great brand, but they made a bet that there was a lot of upside. It was a very good bet. Absolutely. So have Team they maxed the out? The Berge we'll see. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Not bad footage, is it? Well, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Really appreciate your insights. Thank you for having me.